Hello, you're watching Much Ado About Something today, and I'm Donna. If you're new here, welcome, and if you've been around for a while, welcome back. Well, I'm in here in the kitchen, and I'm trying to just get caught up on a few things, and I thought I'd just bring you in here with me and around the house a little bit and show you a few things and share a day in the life with you. Well, my stove, this is my favorite eye right here. I've been in here breaking it down and cleaning it up, and it doesn't look very clean, but that's what I've been doing. When I was making chicken and dumplings the other day, it boiled over a little bit. The chicken and dumplings did, and uh, I had to take this burner apart here and make sure I cleaned it good. It doesn't look clean, but it is clean. And I'm not sure what's going on right here. I don't know if this is uh, just from cooking so much and using big pots that's causing these stains here around it. But it's, it's been scoured with uh, baking soda and vinegar. And this is what I've got left. And I'm just wiping it down and I'm going to put it all back together again. But there's some little raised up pieces right here. Little raised up bits. I'm not sure what these are. I don't know if that's the paint flaking off. And I didn't want to scrub too hard on it in case it was the paint. Because I didn't want to have, you know, places that didn't have paint there on my stove. Got to put the drip pan back in it. And of course my drip pan, pan looks a little rough too. But you know I cook uh, almost every day. And I sometimes cook more than once a day. So there's a lot of use going on here from this little stove. Got to get this element plug back in. My chicken and dumplings did not burn. Oh, I forgot a middle piece here. They didn't burn. They just boiled over. I was helping one of the grandchildren. If you don't know, I have six grandchildren and I keep them all. Not all at the same time, but off and on. I keep my grandchildren and I spend as much time with them as I possibly can. Well, I got the stove I put back together. And here are the chicken and dumplings that I made yesterday. I put them in the crock pot because we'll probably have these for supper again tonight. Me and Donald love chicken and dumplings. It's one of our favorite meals. I have a video on this and I'll, I'll link it down below for you. It's how to make chicken and dumplings from scratch. And these are the dumplings that's called drop dumplings. I also make it with pastry dumplings sometimes. But they are a really good delicious recipe and Donald and I eat these often that's something we eat a lot of so I'm in here I've got the big stove I cleaned up and I got the chicken and dumplings on so that that'll be on today for dinner tonight and I've got to do some cleaning I've got to do some glass cleaning now you've probably saw my video where I told you about this Donald bought this to clean up the cars with and I'm trying to use it up because I don't want him to ever buy any more cleaner that's in a can like this. First of all, this is probably the most expensive way to go. This glass cleaner does work great, but it's very expensive compared to the glass cleaner I'm going to show you how to make. This glass cleaner right here uh, comes out in a foam and you wipe it away. It's really easy to use and it's convenient. But it has uh, propellants in it, this glass cleaner does, that propels this um, product out of the can. And it also um, cannot be refilled. It can be recycled if you take places that recycle this kind of a container, but it cannot be refilled. So to me, this is not a product that I would choose. It's not economical for me because I can't uh, refill my container. And it's not... Um, the product that I would I would choose to buy but my husband did buy this to clean the cars with and of course he only cleans the cars once every few months so this is just sitting around this house and so I'm going to use it up and he can just use the cleaner that I make to clean the cars with it works just as good well I've got a spray bottle here that's from Grove Collaborative and this is what I put my glass cleaner in you can use any kind of spray bottle you can recycle a spray bottle that you've had and I'm just going to fill this up with water. Now I apologize to you for my dishes in the sink. I'm in here 
real life cleaning. And I haven't got to that part yet, but I'm going to share with you my glass cleaning recipe. Now I just fill this bottle up. And I'll leave a little bit of head space so that I can add the next ingredient. Now this is a, a dishwashing liquid that you can buy from... I got this at Walmart and you can buy this. And it's the uh, Ultra Platinum Foam. It goes in a little spray pump and it foams out and it's concentrated. I love to use this cleaner. I love the way it smells and I love the way it cleans. You can refill your little foam pump with it. And it's also good to clean many other things. And so I've got my bottle full of water right here. And I'm just going to add just a little bit. All you need is a few drops of this. It's concentrated. And this makes an excellent glass cleaner. It's re refillable, it's economical, and I tell you, it, it, it's hard to beat it. It's like my husband says, it's just hard to beat Dawn. Dawn is, a, is an excellent cleaner. Now that I have got this um, water, and I've got this uh, Dawn dishwashing liquid in it, I'm going to shake it up a little bit, and I'm going to show you how I use it. Well, I have a lot of kiddos, and I have a lot of glass. There's a lot of glass in my house. There's windows, doors, mirrors. And there's, there's a lot of kids. I don't know if you can see these fingerprints on this. Uh, or to see how dirty this mirror is. Maybe you can. And this is the uh, dishwashing liquid and the water that we mix together. And I've gave it a little shake. And I'm going to spray this mirror down. And show you how I use this glass cleaner. I'm sorry. I've got a rotator cuff injury. I can't use that right hand. It won't, I can't reach it high enough to, to clean it. So let me switch hands and get back to it. You just spray it and just wipe it down. Now I use uh, lint-free cloths. This is cotton cloths that I've had for years. And of course they're stained. They're not dirty. Stains are not dirt. This is just a stained cloth. I throw these in the wash and clean them. And reuse them. So I'm not throwing away a lot of money on pot, paper towels. And then I just take this uh, cloth here. This one also came from Grove. I'm sure you can pick these up anywhere off of Amazon or any place similar. And there you go. That mirror is clean. It's a clean mirror. No streaks, and it does really well. And, of course, I've got these over here that need the same treatment. Oh, I'll try not to let that. Get up as far as I can reach here. Now, this mirror is an antique, so it's got a little scratches and dings in the glass that are part of its character, but... It is not dirty. It is clean. And of course, I've got this mirror here. I love this medicine cabinet mirror and especially love to do our hair right here. My daughter always loved to do her hair here because when you open this mirror, you can see the back of your head. You can see how your hair looks in the back. Plus, I have a lot of mirrors in this bathroom because, you know, I don't have any windows in here. I don't have any natural light. So mirrors reflect what light we do have in here. And it uh, also helps you to see yourself when you're getting ready. So I'm going to clean these mirrors with this um, glass cleaner that I showed you how to make for just a few cents. If even that. The bottle, the container is recyclable. So 
this is Donald's little trimming mirror where he trims up his beard and mustache and nose and whatever else needs to be trimmed. <laughs> so we have to keep that clean. And as you can see, this cleaner works on any type of mirror or window that you have. It does a great job. There's no streaks, fingerprints, it's clean. And that's what you want in a cleaner. And so that's what I do for the glass cleaner. Now this is something that I bought because having so many people in the house, and this is our main bathroom, we do have a little half bathroom in there in the bedroom, uh, in the playroom now, what was, used to be my daughter's bedroom, but we, uh, you know, we got a lot going on. I bought this Lysol product right here, and it is in a spray bottle. I won't be buying this again, even though I really do like it, and it's a good product. In the future, I'll just buy a Lysol that needs to be mixed and put it in my own spray bottle. But I am trying to use this cleaner up, and I liked it because the spray bathroom cleaner is just is so convenient. And this is Lysol, so it's going to kill some germs. So I'm going to spray that on there, and I'm going to leave it on there for about 10 minutes so that it'll disinfect it, and then I'm going to come back and wipe this down. But this is a, a cleaner that I did buy in this bottle because... I'm cleaning this bathroom often, and I just thought it would make my job easier. And I do like it. I love the way it smells, and I love the way it works. But then again, it's not a refillable container. It's something else that has to go into the recycling bin. And, you know, we don't really know what happens to it once it goes in a recycling bin. We don't know if it gets recycled or if it goes back into the trash. So I won't be buying this again, even though I really do like it. I'll, I'll just go ahead and make my own bath cleaner okay this cleaner sat for a while it's killed the germs i've gave it time to work a little bit so i'm just going to wipe it down keep this good and clean keep it sanitized And, of course, you do the commode the same way. You just spray it and wipe it down. Well, this is the alternative that I have for that. So, in the future, I'll just be using this spray bottle. Now, this is a plastic one. I'll have to get another glass one when I wear this one out to replace it. But I don't throw away what I have just to go buy something new. I go ahead and use this until I can't use it anymore. And then... I'll replace it with a glass one when it messes up. Now, in the future, I bought this multi-purpose cleaner, and, of course, I'll be using that. And, uh, of course, it's a container that can be recycled. But it's it's a lot of uses in here. This, uh, this container will last much longer than the spray container. There's many more uses in there and a lot more economical. And, of course, I love Pine Glow. I know they had a recall on the Pine Saw. But this is Pine Glow, and it's made in North Carolina, and it's a good cleaner. I love to use it. I use it in a lot of places, and it's an antibacterial and a disinfectant, which will be great in the bathroom. So that's what I'll be doing when I get uh, use up all this Lysol spray foam cleaner. I won't be buying that again. I'll just go ahead and use these chemicals that I bought right here, and, and I'll use those to disinfect and clean my bathroom. And maybe after I use all these up, I'll go to my own homemade cleaner that I make from scratch, and that's for a different video. It is a beautiful day here today, a beautiful sunny day. It's supposed to get up to 71 degrees here in February, and this is my little plant. I've set it here in front of the door so it can get some of the light. That's what I do often. I don't have a lot of windows in my house, so anytime, and I do have a lot of plants, but anytime they need a little extra sunshine, I'll go ahead and set them in front of the door and let them absorb some. Now I have got to get in here and 
make some more comfrey salve. I have a few containers of comfrey salve left here for our use. And of course, with six grandchildren, that's what I, I put on their boo-boos. That's what I put on their scratches and all the things they get, of the course, when they're playing here at Grammy's. But I've got to make some more because I've given away most of what I have. I've gave some for Christmas, and then I've gave to friends and family so that they can try it. And I'm, uh, I'm going to be working on that today. I may film that in a different video, how to make comfrey salve. I do have a video on how to make comfrey salve. But um, I just, uh, as I've made it, and I realize there's a few pointers that I probably need to add in that video, so I may remake that video. And I uh, will be on the lookout for that if you're interested in that, how I make comfrey salve for my family. Well, I thank you for joining me today. I'm going to include a clip from the day I spent with Mama and took her to do her errands. She shared an Appalachian word with me that I didn't really know. Uh, it's how to book an address, book the address. Never heard that phrase before. She grew up with it. She shared it with me yesterday, and I wasn't sure what she was talking about. But it just simply means to address an envelope. But I want to share that little clip of her sharing that information with me here at the end of the video. I hope you uh, stay tuned for that and just learn a new Appalachian word. And I was able to tell her that they now call mail snail mail when you mail it through the post office. And she was interested to learn that. I thank you for joining me around here today and let me share with you two cleaning pro products that I'll no longer use. And just uh, share a little bit of the day in the life with me as I'm heating up our dinner from an already made recipe. And I hope to see you next time. Until next time. Hello, you're watching my to do about something, and I'm Donna. Well, I'm out today with Mama. We're taking her to do her monthly errands today. And we were talking about my sister-in-law said that a, uh, somebody at work asked her to back a letter for her and that she didn't know what that meant. And Mama said, well, mercy me, she knows what that means. That's an Appalachian term. And what does to back a letter mean, Mama? Address it. Yep. Put so. the address on it. <laughs> See, we would not know that if Mama hadn't have told me. I would have never known what to back a letter meant. Of course, that's talking about snail mail. When you mail it through the post office, you want to back your letter. Back a letter means just to put the ad address on it. Snail mail? Yeah. If it's not email or electronic now, it's called snail mail. Well, I've learned. <laughs> United <laughs> Postal Service. Yeah, we're uh, exchanging terms today, right? <laughs> okay.